I am unashamed. What about you? Look, my expectations were so low because, you know, we've been duck hunting. It's, it's not been a good year. <laughs> no. But but it's better than last year. Yep. It's better than last better year. Than last last year. Because last year was the high water. We're sitting about a 100 two, over what we killed last year. We still was, got two weeks. I told you to throw that notebook away. <laughs> Something <laughs> <laughs> the truth hurts, doesn't it, Jason? Yeah. I mean, I'm like, if you're, once you realize this is going to be a bottom five year. Quit counting. Quit counting. Quit counting. Just but he's misery been, to misery to misery. But he's been counting for 30 years. You got 30 Camp. years worth of calendar. And you mm-hmm. want to see if it goes in cycles, it picks back yeah, up. Yeah. You say, why could we get something over here? Which we should show off. that on what this podcast. That? People wouldn't believe, like, it's a stack of calendars. That yeah. go back thirty years ago. Of course, some of them are funny because they're like mom's little, you know, pink calendar, you whatever he could find. Yeah. You document. He documents every day what was killed, the weather, mm-hmm. a lot of times who was Temper- hunting, temperature, temperature, who was hunting, where yeah. they were shot. It's yeah. pretty amazing. Well, they have we, been useful. You maybe know. we can make a book out of that. <laughs> now, so look, we took a couple of Marines, which is, I think they're the plan B for all action if there's any problems. It's the kind of guys you want in control. You call the Marines. Right. And we didn't have very good hunts. Although, to them, I don't know what we shot. We killed killed about 20 ducks in two days. Two days, but they thought it was the greatest ever because they hunt in Virginia. Right. So, if you hunt in Virginia and you come over here and shoot 20 ducks, they think it's awesome. I thought what was interesting, though, Jay shot a 10-point buck. And one of the Marines, because he couldn't find him, he tracked him like a bloodhound, <laughs> which made me realize you don't, you know, if a Marine is looking for you. If you, he wings you and you it, got away, but it ain't over yet. You're in trouble. <laughs> no, you, if you're, I'm a if tracker. You're, if you're bleeding, with, the Marine's going to find you. Oh, and he, tra- he found that deer submerged in water. It wasn't anything sticking up but his brow tines. Yep. And, I mean, he sniffed him out. Wow. And what then what's deep. more impressive is, look, when Jay loads the thing up, huge deer. I mean, 10-point thing weighs 275 pounds. He sat there and watched Jay cleaning him for about 10 minutes. And finally he said, step up, step aside. <laughs> yeah, the Marine and, told Jay, get out of the way. Jay yeah. like, look at her. <laughs> and he got his knife out, and Jay said, what I saw is very hard to describe <laughs> because he took that knife and it was like a part of his hand and he basically cleaned the deer in less than 10 minutes <laughs> yeah. jay would have so been I in there half hour were you boned and all yeah wow he said just a carcass hanging there and all the meat was piled up right here he said okay it's, i said were you impressed and jay said i was in the military but i was more scared <laughs> at that moment than i've ever been <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> what if this guy has a flashback or something right you know? i mean the guy was a big guy already and i thought Boy. well you know what's funny is jay, so this is i i didn't hear that part of the caper but i knew that jay couldn't find the deer because he we were texting he was supposed to cook at the house or something so he said i'm going to get bobo so he came and got Bobo was his plan. That was his plan, A. Eh? But now yeah. I understand Bobo. Well, it got, was a competition. You had Bobo, who Bobo is a now great. has pneumonia. He's not, now Bobo has pneumonia as well, of today. Well, we just had a big rain. Everything's flooded. That's well, Bobo why the ran with the Marines for about an hour. He's got pneumonia. So I said, boys, y'all, y'all, that's pretty rough ride. Y'all went on, wasn't it? Well, I, I said, thought it was. Bobo had a bad cough this morning. I said, like, well, where is it? She said, well, Dan took him to the doctor. And then she said, oh, he's got pneumonia. I said, oh, no. See, it was a competition competition tracking you got bobo who is rat terrier and a mighty fine tracker he, he was not used to waste deep water well right that's what got him and then you had a marine well guess what the marine won which <laughs> if it. you if you needed any other reason to be proud of our military a good dog is good but a marine <laughs> well even even jay national guard now that he's got himself in good shape i mean compared to you know there's some retrieves he couldn't make maybe that blue would make but he makes he's a pretty good retriever now too Actually, and you know he I walks found around that the property. men uh under you know, fifty, right, under fifty. I'm They're out. actually better dogs. Yeah, they mind better. <laughs> yeah. You can say, "Hey, he fell over further to the left. He'll move him." You notice that my you... dog? I'm trying to get him to say, "Back over, over." I'm blowing the whistle at him. But a human being, you say, "Hey, he's to your left, son." Well, don't turn over right then. And the human has a gun. 
and he's got a gun, which a dog can't carry. Well, that's right, because you know they don't have enough. Well, they don't have any right. arms. So, yeah. so there's a lot of. I think young men is you need to train them to be. Retrained. But have you noticed the older we the get, that your age limit is rising? Because you used to say under forty, under thirty. Now it's under fifty because yeah. everybody in the blind. I looked up for and Stone my children a, are in their fifties, <laughs> crowding going towards yeah. sixty, and I'm like, man. <laughs> oh, we had a long talk today about look here's so here's. We had a, actually a good hunt. Our expectations were low, but we shot, I don't know, 12, 15 ducks. And at 10 o'clock, Jay went to go get the, the rig so we could, you know, load out. And the, we had a cameraman from Duck Commander. He, he comes every once in a while just for social media and see, see, you know, to let everybody know what we're up to in the duck hunting world. And so he said. Which, where do, where do, where do folks find that? Is that on Duck Commander's website? Just because somebody will ask now. Do you even uh, know where they show that? You know, Al, I don't know. I'm uh, sure probably it, DuckCommander.com. Just if you go to DuckCommander.com you, and follow the list of Twitter and Facebook and all, all right. that, they got it. So today's hunt will probably be posted somewhere. And so what what little footage he can get, because I noticed that since he's, you know, Duck Commander sending him down here, but every time he turns around, we're like, don't move. <laughs> You know, quit moving. Get out. still. Get and out. Look, this guy, he's, he's real white. And, uh, I mean, it's like he hadn't seen the sun in weeks. Well, he's, a so, he's, a, he's a camera guy. Who, who, what camera and sound people aren't weird? That's true. Including most people who here, stay so. a lot on computers, <laughs> most white boys, they yeah. end up bright white. <laughs> well, he they, is. There's no sun well, in these little <laughs> cubicles. You can't get any any sun rays down in there where they camp out, mm-hmm. and well, it's look, just week after week. And you're month right; month they have to month. have a dark environment. I went by our you're office. You're glowing. I went by the, our office the other day where our guys are working on this, and they got all the. It's the storefront there in West Monroe. They got all the uh, the drapes dry. It looks like it's an abandoned warehouse. That's what I'm talking and about. And they're like deep in the enclave, working on it. Just nothing but a bright light. Look, on. so I go out. We knocked down two gal walls because Sai si was standing up the invisible man and they were coming straight in and so i just raised up and shot he thought they were wood ducks which is my point about the generation is getting older he on the downhill sale first sale so of course then everybody grabbed their gun bum 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 but since jace was, is saying if you mistake a woody for a gadwall you're just about over the hill yeah where you're, you are you're gone you know and so and then he missed and he's shooting a little pop gun and so if he times it where he shoots with everybody else, then he claims the ducks. Here we go. So I do. I have the product for you, that you two need. This is this is this is really good. We get a lot of stuff, and we got a lot of people that do ads for our show. But now this is one that's timely. So this, I need this. You need this. Do I yeah. need this? Oh yeah, you do too. Okay. So this is from our Duke Cannon Supply Company. That's the name of them. No, I like cannons. There you go. This is a moderate self improvement box. Moderate self improvement Imp- box. That's what it says right I'm there not on sure the top what that of the means. box. Explain that. So that means that everything in this box, you, you two especially needs. Here, here's what's here's what's in there. Less stink. Okay. Better hair, right. decent hands, a okay. cleaner face, and a proper scent. That's what you get yeah. out of that box for Those you two. Are five of my weaknesses. <laughs> I do stink. Miss K would love that. <laughs> exactly. I'm having a bad hair year. On my not. behalf, yeah. Phil, you're having a bad hair decade. <laughs> I haven't been to a barber <laughs> shop in 50 years. Well, let me tell you this. <laughs> but the woman up the road. Little little woman that lives right up the road, <laughs> married, got a bunch of kids. From time to time, I say, Cricket. Her name's Cricket. Yep. I say, Cricket. Oh boy, what about a little? <laughs> let's, let's, my hair is getting down to my eyes and my face, and you know, all the way down. You know, I'm spitting on my own hair. See what I'm saying? She she goes in there about five minutes, gives me a trim. Do you have her on speed dial? <laughs> No, but Miss K does. They talk. <laughs> okay. Well, for when cricket's not available, 
We've got Duke Cannon for you, Dad. So here's the deal. You got $80 worth of stuff in the box. Hmm. Well, I'm wondering about this decent hands because during duck season, my well, hands get so rough yeah, that this, my wife does not want me to here, touch his bloody yeah. knuckles. And look, I'm going to just tell you all this. repair balm. Yeah, your hands begin to crack. I mean, I want to keep crack. this PG-13, but it's very hard to mess around with your woman without using your hands. With the rough you know? hands. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, there you go. Okay. So you got $80 worth of stuff. Uh, but you're going to be able to get this for 50 bucks, free shipping, uh, for the lower 48. So you order with these guys, there's even a certificate of completion there, dad. So you, if you were to use this product, you, we could actually, you would be certified less stinky, smell better, better hands. So oh, got face wash. Duke yeah. Cannon, DukeCannon.com. I love the name, DukeCannon.com. Use the promo code Phil. You're going to get 15% off your entire order. So you're already saving money because it's less, the whole package. And then you're going to get 15% off the order anyway. So really good stuff. Check it out. DukeCannon.com. Promo code FEEL for 15% off. Smell better and have softer hands. One step program to a moderately better use. So they're not getting too wild with it. You You know know what this means for you? Do everything in moderation. And this means the one step program is just don't go whole hog wild about it. Yeah. Just just a little better. This will be better. like a honeymoon for you and Miss K. Yeah. This could <laughs> rekindle whatever's gone out. Because <laughs> you're at that, you told me you're at the stage that you just don't want to get hurt. <laughs> That's right. That's, woo, we made it through it without getting hurt. Wow. <laughs> that's where you end up i'm just giving you boys some sound advice about when the years creep up on you yeah go with that get your cup of tubes of that that'll work you know, he's a much better sign jason M, he's on the far end he's 20 to 25 feet away from me i'm on one end and he's on the other end a couple of woodies came in the one with the band and the, but but he's whispering there they are the cameraman said look right there so they're but they're talking in low tones. Right. Well, you know, after seventy three years of standing shoulder to shoulder with people with shotguns, then you're hear. hearing you're you're going to lose some hearing. Yeah, no right. doubt about it. No oh, doubt. So you, therefore you, I didn't it. get the word on the Woodies coming in. <laughs> they all boom a boom boom boom. Why didn't y'all shoot that up? And I said, I never got the word on <laughs> yeah. what was well, that was the story I was getting to is right when Jay went to get the rig, two wood ducks came in and I had, I mean, he said right there, right there. The cameraman did. I looked up, and they're literally coming into the decoys. Well, one of them lit, so I went out on it, and the other one went to the left. And I thought, I'll wait till they shoot the one flying. Because you got the one on the water. I got the one on the water. Well, the one they never shot because of what just Phil just said. He never heard right there. Here they are. I mean, he's over. Thinking well, I'm away. down in the brush. I mean, right. which where I should be. That's why they lit there. If I'd have been standing up out on the shooting porch, you know, you know, well, rubber, si, look, rubbernecking, they call it rubbernecking. Yeah. You know, they're, they're looking like that all all day long. Well, they don't so get here. Si eyes asleep. Yeah. It's in the sitting position, which is weird. And so I wait, I wait, I wait. Well, then the duck gets up, the one that lit. Well, that's the rule in duck hunting. If, you know, you if let the duck to, sit there, but if once it gets up, that's it. it. I don't care if there's a hundred coming. Yeah. That one's leaving. So I shot it, which I'm glad I did. Because then the other retriever we got, Burley, because Jay was out there. We didn't bring a dog this morning. <laughs> Burley held it up out there and it was, well, we're fast, had a band. Oh, a band. We're fast yeah. reaching the stage to where Cy and myself, not so much me as it is Cy, Cy just, he'll just sleep in an upright position. <laughs> but people are now shaking him if they see ducks coming to see if he's dead or alive. So they, they, they gouge him a little bit and when he finishes, what are you doing? Well, he's still alive. We got some ducks coming. One of these days, we can keep it up, Al. You're going to shake him. You're going to shake, shake him. Well, well, he cashed in the question will be, The question with our group would be, would, would we end the hunt then? Or we just say, well, you know what? We're just going to finish. We, I only laugh. Will Dad say we'll get him to 11? I know? only laugh about that because in the book of John and throughout the Bible, there's a guaranteed resurrection from the dead right. if you run up on Jesus Christ. And you think about it, you say, 
So old age, y'all are not singing the blues. Oh, I'm just trying to keep the wrinkles off my neck. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to look. No. Right. no well, just, that, just and go look, with the it. plastic surgery, uh, I don't know what the industry is doing, but you can spot these people that it looks like somebody just stuck their foot, you know, on their neck and just. Oh, oh, I know it. <laughs> it's so like a, rubber band. a piece of visqueen over yeah, it. You I'm know, like, you know what? Does it really matter? Just you know, age gracefully. Yeah. The resurrection but, trumps every bit of that. Yeah, because it's not going to work. Which is pretty cool. You well, made a good line one time. You told me about people who try to look young when they get older, and you're like, you know, at some point, everything goes south. Yep. And there's nothing you can do about it. Nope. It literally goes the south. The human anatomy is headed south. That's right. You can't stop time. And yeah. why would you want to? I mean, it, we're here for – but but this is the difference in faith. We're here for a season. You know, this this doesn't last long. How fast did 73 years yeah. go by, Dad? Well, y'all, it's, it seemed like I got here yesterday. You know, we don't want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. Yep. Then he says, we believe Jesus died and rose again. Well, it, it's the centerpiece of you look at things like the aging process. You say, what else is new? Right. We're here for a short period of time. James, the brother of Jesus, said it's like a vapor. Yep. We just appear and disappear. We have one shot at immortality here. If someone has a better story, I don't care who he is. <laughs> if you're an atheist or whoever, do you have a better story than that? And so look, far, I've, I've found none that had a better story, a story that could beat it. Nope. And I, so I'm and, going with it. And it's like you said, in, in a practical way, we've been talking some on the podcast about, you know, we buried two of your siblings yep. uh, within the last, you know, three or four months. Yep. Because both just happened at the same time, you know, as dementia got them. But I would say both in both settings, you know, we were we were celebratory about their lives and you know, obviously yep. you hated that the last few, you know, they weren't themselves, but at the same yep. time, that's if you didn't have hope of heaven, that'd be tough. Oh, what are we're you talking in about? we're in John one and there's a statement that John the Baptist made in the first chapter that I'm sure we'll dig deeper into as this goes on, but you know, that right after John recorded that, you know, through Jesus or the word which became flesh, speaking of Jesus, all things were made, you know, in verse three, without him, nothing was made that has been made in him was life. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. And then it introduces John the Baptist who prepared the way, you know, for Jesus said there came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light. But he made a st statement later on in verse 15, which goes in with what we're talking about. You talk about aging and time. But he made this profound statement. I've mentioned this before on previous podcasts, but it's, it's quite the statement that you can make about someone, a human being that was on the earth. In verse 15, John testifies concerning him, speaking of Jesus. He cries out saying, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me, because Jesus was to come, he was preparing the way for Jesus. So he says, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Before you say anything else, have you ever heard of another being and another person that that could be said about? Think about it. <laughs> no. No. It doesn't even make sense. I, no. I'd love to know what people of the world – because it's not a verse I read, you know, when I'm introducing Jesus to someone. You know, we all share Jesus with a lot of people. But I think I'm going to use that for future reference. Yeah. Because I'm going to say, what kind of statement is that? John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus Christ. And he said the reason he's awesome, you know, I'm using that word. But he was saying that this person I'm testifying about is he came – the one who's coming after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this guy gets up one day, but oh, the Bible's a myth and a fairy tale. How'd this dude dream that up? I mean, think yeah. about it. You're going to write down a few things here, and this is one of them. What's amazing about it, when we get to the back of John, you know, you know, we have doubting Thomas. 
He yeah. said, I'm not going to believe in the resurrection of the dead until I can touch him and see. I mean, he was saying, boys, I don't know about this. Resurrection of the dead, yeah, yeah, yeah. When it finally takes place, uh, the disciples were in the house again. Thomas was with them, and he had already said, I won't believe it unless I see the nail marks is, you know, you know, in his hands mm-hmm. and his feet. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. So he said, stop. He said, put it in his side. What? What? This is a this is a going over. And Jesus is talking to one of his disciples who has doubted he could pull this off. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. He was so crushed by, he said, good night. He's just beaten death. And I love this one. Jesus told him, because you've seen me, Thomas, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Well, there's where we are. Yeah. You say, I've never seen Jesus post-resurrection. You say, well, why in the world do you follow him and put all your marbles in one bag? He is. Why are you doing that? I believe it because there's no other thing that offers me hope. There's nothing. It's that, that believable. Nothing. <laughs> You I say, think it man, says he'll something get, about he'll you get you out of here alive. I'm like, get you out of here what? Alive. Well, I'm 73, and it feels like I just got here. You're like winding down, right. running out of time. Those who haven't seen, they search. You know, you have to search this out. If I it, pass, y'all make sure you do a podcast the next day. And you say, okay, you know, we're, we're going up there, you know, somebody going to say a few words of old dad there, but yeah. but you don't be squalling and carrying on and, you know, saying, oh, no, <laughs> like that, that I we can lost, uh, we lost their dad. We lost, no, he didn't lose him. Yeah. He lost him. Well, he passed away. No, he didn't. He's not gone anywhere. He's, you know, he passed all right, but he just passed on to the other side. Right. He has departed, as yeah. Peter would say. And if you uh, look at we'll it that do, way. We'll do a podcast. The first request that I denied it was about 20 years ago. Phil said, hey, now I want you, you know, he's out there fishing in the river. I don't know if you remember this, <laughs> but you said. I doubt it. <laughs> you said, now look, if something happens to me and I die, here's what I want you to do. I don't care what your mom says or anybody else. You go make a box, a pine box. I don't want, if you spend over $50, that's too much. And he said, just put me in it and just push me out in the river. Like a Viking funeral? Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember so, saying that, but what a way to go. Yeah. <laughs> he said, because these people, you know, going through these funerals, paying thousands of dollars, I mean, that's just stupid. I'm coming out of the ground anyway. So as you guys are listening to uh, the Unashamed podcast, uh, you're probably paying too much uh, for your cell phone. I mean, I know Dad... That doesn't. I'm not out a whole lot of yeah, money. It's not that. applying to you, Zero. But, but for Jason and I, we we have you know our plans, which are expensive. I don't, to be honest with you, I don't even know, but I'm sure it's. A I lot. was given several cell phones. I've been given several cell phones in my life. What do you do with them? When you're uh, the last time I had them, I just took them, and the, y'all were a little younger, and I just tossed them to the back <coughs> where the young people were, <laughs> and they caught them. And what they did with them, I do not know. You're just throwing them out like beads I, I and just, Mardi Gras. They gave them to me. The, you know, we were at some deal to build them and all that and gave a speech. But anyway, they, they here's a brand new cell phone. They thought I was going to get all Top fired of the up. line. I was like, boy, I appreciate that. We got out there in the car. I said, hey. I started throwing them in the back seat there, a couple of them. And, and they, they, well, here's some, they were fighting over Here's something that won't surprise So we got we got a group called Patriot Mobile. Um, which is uh, a much more affordable plan. But also the biggest difference is between Patriot Mobile and some of the other larger carriers is that a lot of these uh, cell phone carriers, they donate a lot of money to left-wing causes, open borders, abortion. I mean, everything you can imagine, you know, that's coming in. you know, got a lot of left-wingers in charge. So these guys decide to start their own company, and basically what they do is you go with their plan, they're going to donate. They're going to tell you right up front, we donate money to religious liberty, Second Amendment, you know, conservative causes, which is not a bad deal. So if you want to support these guys and get a good plan, it starts at 25 bucks. Uh, Patriot Mobile. It's unlimited talk, text, um, reliable nationwide service, no hidden fees. So we want you to go to PatriotMobile.com slash Phil. 
patriotmobile.com slash Phil and use the offer code Phil, you get a free month of service. So that's kind of gets you kicked off to give these guys a try. And so what they're basically saying is support us. We're going to support the causes that you probably like if you're watching our and podcast. The, the irony is if Phil had a plan, he would be with That's right. Patriot this would be the group Mobile. you would be with. Yeah. If you well, ever start. I'll put it this way. If I do, if I ever decide to purchase a cell phone, this is the bunch I'd go with. See sure what I'm saying? There you go. That's as good an endorsement there, as you can get from a non cell phone. But that day has not come yet. I mean, I, I don't have a cell phone or don't intend to get one, but if I get one, it's with this bunch. All right. There you go. Fair enough. Hey, patriotmobile.com slash Phil. Use the offer code Phil. Check it out. So, look, I thought for a while. All right, that's what I'll do. He asked me to do it, and you've already forgotten this request, but that's fine. But you can stay with that. But then I, I realized that, you know what, that's against the I law. I was going to say, we got one problem with that. Yeah, it's yeah, against yeah but what the... are they going to do? <laughs> well, they'll Fine. probably. <laughs> probably. Put they'll you buy... in jail. Maybe. Maybe. They might. What? Well, I'll put my dad in the you box won't and push them out of the river. That's what he said to do. Now, we could take it. Uh, in Texas, you can, you can do it that way. You can bury people on your property and all yeah. that. But Louisiana – uh, the, unfortunately for Louisianans, the the lobby for the funeral homes has made all the laws. Yeah, for if how, we, if how we you, went with my well. my type, barrel, it would be it's a possibility there would be somewhat of a stir downstream. <laughs> You know, when the box came up, you know, you know, lies in somebody's pee, are they out there trying to take it a suntan? You know, what's that? I don't know. Like a- Here, let's open it up. Whoa. <laughs> well, I think it just continues this racket that, look, I mean, I know people got to make a living, but to me, I mean, nowadays it, it takes like $10,000 to bury somebody. That's, you yeah, know? you're right. I mean, that, a- that, what, well, it's a box. Now, you know, our Uncle Tommy was the first one of our family. And by the way, some people have asked about this on the podcast. They've sent this in as questions, so it's a good time to talk about it. He was cremated. And as far as I know, he was the first Robertson to be cremated. Uh-huh. But I get this question a lot, and there's some that have even said, look, I'm you know, I'm getting older. This is what I'm considering. Somewhere along the line, somebody must have taught or had a doctrine or something that yeah. you shouldn't be cremated because I'm getting a lot of people ask about it. And so we should talk about that. I mean, as, as far as I know from anything in the scriptures, you know, it, I it think doesn't the matter. The Stoics and the Epicureans there in Acts 16 and 17, they had all these crazy ideas about what you do to the dead. That's why when Paul came up and started talking about the resurrection, you know, in Acts 17, well, that that sent that whole bunch, and because it says they got they gather around and talked about wordi- the latest ideas. The the the, the, the wordage used was they sneered. Yeah, whatever yeah. a sneer. Yeah, I don't know. But whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> well, because they <laughs> had the New Zealanders. They had yeah, all these. Yeah. That's why you have to say the words like in the Western. You know, somebody should say a word. And, yeah. And you have the Indians and the burial grounds, and you couldn't walk through it because the spirits, you know, had to have their time, at, you know, of rest before. Sure. I it, was standing in New Zealand, and I thought, I'm fixing to introduce the gospel here. I don't know whether they've heard it or not over in New Zealand, but I said, worth a try. We had duck hunted from one end of New Zealand, two islands, the big one and the little one. We went from one end to the other, duck hunting. So I was going in there teaching 50 ducks a day, right? 50 apiece. <laughs> so the limit was very liberal. So I was blowing my duck calls and showing them. Then all of a sudden, I just shifted gears, and I began to speak about Jesus, and especially when I got to the resurrection. The only thing I had ever heard before what I heard then, as soon as I talked talk about the resurrection of the dead, the death of Jesus on the cross, his resurrection. The sound was was like, uh, you know, I remember Tony Blair in the House of Commons in England when they didn't like what Blair was saying. It, no, no, it wasn't that. It was like, well, when I'm speaking of the resurrection, I'm getting this feedback, and that's where it sounded. So I turned to this guy and I said, what's that, what's that racket they're making? He said, they don't want you to talk about that. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm going to tell them anyway. I said, they need Shocker. this. They said, they've never heard anyone in a public setting speak about those matters. In New Zealand, Christianity is a very 
it's a very private, uh, private thing. Mm -hmm. But they've never heard someone, Mr. Robertson, speak out like that. You're scaring them. <laughs> and they're letting you know <laughs> it was like a, 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 a roar. Yeah. So now listen to so this. So you didn't talk about it anymore, did you? <laughs> so I said, boy, I, I just got louder. <laughs> well, Shocker. I get down there after it's over and they had a table with duck calls and we we're making a little money there selling our duck calls. They would come up to me and from that audience, it was a big audience and, and I did it multiple times. I think what was ironic, I think one of the places I spoke, Christ Church, New Zealand, I said, well, somebody has been through here at some point for, for that. That's to be the name the, of the town. Yeah. Name of the yeah. town. But anyway, we had our table set up, and people, the New Zealanders, would come to me. They would look to their right and left, and they're looking like this to make sure nobody heard them, and they would whisper, we appreciate what you said. We appreciate it. Keep doing that. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, that, but they were looking around like I, I don't want anybody to hear me say that. So I got back home. I don't have a computer, but the people are in and around me, they do have computers, uh -huh. and a lot of them spoke freely via the internet, saying we really appreciate Mr. Robbins come over here, and we not, we we just never heard anybody be that bold about talking about Jesus in the open. Yeah. So even though I got the blowback, er, 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 all that. There were plenty of them there who said, you yep. see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So you just can't let stuff like that, you know, back you off or back you but down. Don't you, you think know? that's just. Stand on the gospel. But don't, don't you think bust. that's just a ploy of the evil one? This whole private, private religion anyway is just to keep people from talking. I mean, the, that's the, what, yeah, I mean, I think. I mean, offer evil, your body yeah. as a living sacrifice, Romans 12, 1 and 2 there, holy and pleasing to God. You say, everywhere you are, you, you you are a proclaimer. Right. You're standing on the gospel of Jesus. Yeah. So it doesn't make a difference where you are, church building, all that. We are the building. See yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, they're just trying to get you to shut up. I always think about that story about in, uh, with Stephen, was it Acts 7, where they literally put their hands over their ears and rushed and they at it. Went, yeah, 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 yeah. Screaming and hollering. They <laughs> were not going to listen. <laughs> You know, and they eventually killed him. They did for yep. for declaring Jesus. I mean, I think if you decide that you're going to go public with Jesus, which we all have, I mean, the name of this podcast is Unashamed. But I believe everyone who understands Jesus enough to obey him and surrender to him is then qualified to declare Jesus. That's correct. Once you understand Jesus, you, it, that qualifies you to then share it because a lot of people. In, in religion, they try to get people to say, well, some people are more talented at that than others. And look, I'm not saying we don't have different talents and we have different gifts, but if you can understand it, you can then share it. Right. But part of the problem has been that people haven't been, people have hurt our ability to do what we're doing here because they major in minors and they yell and scream and only talk well, about, right. th you know what I'm saying? They've given us a bad name. You that's know, why you, I focused on Jesus. I mean, introducing. Exactly. On, I mean, I wish even in the churches, I wish we adopted what uh, the African American culture does in their churches. And Al probably probably knows of this. You know, in our church, if when somebody says something they agree with, they'll say Amen, or if they're really fired up, you know, Hallelujah. We got one fella that back there. He just screams as loud as he can. Well, he got going. Jesus! He got going yesterday. I got it going. I thought, I got... Kurt's here. I'll <laughs> preach yesterday for the first time in a while. I mean, I church. like your thinking because well, where, where, I, where I'm speaking and where I reside on Sunday morning, a little short time when the brothers meet, about 60% of this congregation is, in fact, black. So well, and, let me, and, let me and, share and this with you. They're doing what you're saying, which share, I love it. But let me share something with you. I don't know if you know that this happened. That's, we say that but because I was at uh, – an African American church, and there was there was a guy. We were actually at a funeral, and so they had many preachers. Well, I would hear "Amen" and "Hallelujah" and "Tell it, brother," and "You're right," and that's it. But I kept hearing a couple of voices. They'd say, "Well, <laughs> well," and so I leaned over because I was, you know, my one of my best men in my wedding uh, was African American romance, and yep. uh, just like a brother to me. 
I leaned over because it was his wife's, uh, I think, grandfather or yeah, something, something like that. that that had passed away. And uh, so it wasn't I, on preach on brother. This was well. well. He said well, and I leaned over and I said, "What does the well mean?" And he said, "That means he got an issue with it." <laughs> and I said, "What do you mean?" He's like, "He's saying if you would give him a a chance." He would tell you where you're wrong. <laughs> so he's saying, well, that means I have an idea that it's in contrast with what you're saying. Yeah. And I thought, so as long I as, love that. As long as preach on brother, you had more of those than wells. You, you were right. thinking, well, but I'm see, I never headway. knew that because I've done some some funerals, some African-American funerals before. I thought they were just saying, oh, well, no, you're that doing means, a good. Well, well, I have – there's a different <laughs> view of that that you are incorrect, sir. I didn't sir. even know. Well, look, you know what that did? It changed my life forever because now every time I've ever heard a preacher, at some point in that lesson, usually, there's a point that where I just want to scream, well <laughs> – <laughs> You should start doing it. I would love to start the tradition. That's why I'm doing I'm, – I'm announcing this today. <laughs> I would love to have that going in our churches because we get – we're so sensitive – yeah. Well, since we, I'm going to be preaching more, if I ever you say, "Well, I wasn't," now Jay's disagrees. If you'll make a deal, here's with where me, he's wrong. Because now that you're going to be preaching again at our church, which look, you did a uh, very seldom do we brag on each other's brothers and family, but Al did an outstanding job. I mean, I'll give credit to the Holy Spirit of God. I know you. Someone were was trying to tell me the opening line Al had it with the Geico commercial. How did well, that, well, that work? So, I'll tell the history. Yeah, so I got to tell the what. happened happen so so we have a young guy i've been gone almost seven years now out of preaching because when the show hit you know i came back to work for duck commander and to be on the show and then it, everything got big for all of us so we we go and speak around the country so yeah, we're not here most sundays right so I but we are now i couldn't be here in one place until we started doing this and i kind of started being around more but anyway so our young guy announced he was leaving like a yeah. couple of weeks ago and not anything bad no. he just has a be better opportunity right. he's going to colorado great guy and he's more of a counselor and a what what would you call him a uh like a what they, marriage he's a he's got a he's a doctor he's a doctor in marriage and family but so he's a great speaker he's a great speaker and i hired awesome. him so i i love him and so but i knew with him leaving you know when a church loses their preacher and people you know people get kind of freaked out about that and scared you know and what's I, the level right before a shrink He's not like a – he's not – Well, like a I psychologist. I think he has yeah, psychologist. Yeah, psychologist. Yeah, yeah. Psychologist. Well, yeah. 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 But he's not from here, so he – He's from Kansas. He seems yeah. like a shrink to But anyway, but so anyway. so I knew, like, Sunday was the first Sunday post-Trent. And he's still here because he's getting his family together, getting ready to move. So I knew. I was like, now this has to be – I'm going to have to bring it Sunday. Yeah, because I mean, he's a dynamic He's very speaker. dynamic. So I thought we can't have a big fall-off. And look, I, you know, I've i been listening to Trent for seven years when I'm in town. I love him. I mean, and I hired him. So I, I thought, all right, Al, if you're going to step back in, you got to, you know, shuck the corn. There can't be any, you know. So I was in that mode of prayer and prep for the whole thing. But I, but I thought about it, thought, but, uh, you know, you got to have a – I just I'm a humorous person. I use a lot of humor. And Trent was not, so I thought, well, that's you know, that's something I'm going to play on. So I, I thought a couple of weeks ago, I, this commercial, this Geico commercial, that almost everybody would be familiar with, I thought that would be the perfect opening for me stepping back in. Because you funny. had preached, how many years did you preach? I preached for about a dozen years before yeah, the seven before years. Before Trent, and yeah. I worked, I've been at the church for thirty in some capacity. But anyway, so I get up there yesterday is the first day. And so I step into the box, you know, and everybody's waiting. What's Al going to say? And I was like, um, what, what was the opening line? You said, guess who got oh, yeah. reinstated? Guess who got reinstated? <laughs> and so when I said it, it was a, la a big roar and then a big round of applause. And then I was like, I don't well, think most people even knew no, that, that, that at was first a they joke. didn't know, right? You just said, I said guess, guess who, who got, got reinstated? Yeah, which was funny. It was funny. And then I said, well, not officially. Well, then they were laughing because they thought, oh, he's doing the commercial. Then I was like, are you nervous? Me too. And, <laughs> and you like, actually were nervous. Yeah, and I was nervous. And I was like, I will figure it out. So, <laughs> yeah. so it was a big laugh, and it led me into the thing. But it really was, it really was a lot of fun. Once I got going, I got into the text. It but, was. And but you, I'm doing John. Yeah, you <laughs> preached on the the title was Case uh, for Jesus. And it's kind of our theme 
so i mean it's good that you're going to be which by the way prep. to the audience here if you go to wfrchurch.org we stream all our stuff on Sundays if you you know if you're not have a church home, but also you can watch them anytime during the week. Yeah, so Jace free. will be up some, yeah. I'll be up some. I said I would. I would. Well, let me circle back because yeah, I brought meet, it. meet in your houses. Yeah, there you go. Watch us. So I, I brought this up a minute ago. I want to circle back because we didn't deal with it. So because we got off on the resurrection. So cremation, whatever happens to your physical body on Earth, if you even if you go into the ground, you know, with formaldehyde in you. At some point, you go back to dust. That's correct. Which is what the Almighty said. You go back <coughs> to not taking up space anymore. That's right. Before you took up space to begin with, right. your beginning, you didn't take up space. Well, all of a sudden, through your mother and your father, and all this is microscopic, here you come, and there you are, a little embryo that's been impregnated and you're like you are tiny tiny you're very small but it is you you're you're officially taking up space that's right you go as long as you go whenever physical death comes along you go back into the same zone that you were in before you started right. non-existent the only the, the great news out of all that is your soul and your spirit they're just alive without your body until the resurrection until the resurrection so think, the, so well, the point is it doesn't matter whether you were you know vaporized by a nuclear bomb whether you were cremated whether you just got put in a hole in the ground and over the course of however long that takes in new orleans <clears throat> they put you in a they have to bury you above the ground so i didn't realize this everybody gets below sea level yeah so everybody gets cremated in new orleans what happens is they put you in that crypt and one year and one day later, they come in and sweep you out of the back. It gets so hot there during the summer, especially, that basically it cremates you in a year. So they basically, the, the Catholic Church mostly, they rent these vaults that are above the ground. You rent them. So you're in there for a year. They sweep you out of the back. We're ready to put another guy in there. So Where, They sweep you into the ocean? The no, right out of the back of the thing. There's greenest grass oh. anywhere. It's right there in the in the cemetery man i mean so what i'm saying is That's better I, than my idea my idea was since it doesn't matter i mean i think the world says well matter cannot be created or destroyed therefore we need to put it in a box and put a ribbon on it and but they don't understand unless you're god the whatever your existence was if he made the first man from dust well, it's not a big leap. If you can make a man from dust right. and a woman from a rib, it's not a big leap if you're burned, cremated, or hit with a missile or chopped up in little pieces, God forbid. He has the power and the ability to resurrect that. Through He's not going to have any problem him. resurrecting no, us from, no from whatever. The, the, and you're not degrading the body. No. And you're, look, so let me get my redneck. Uh, idea everybody's concerned about the environment and you know we live right south of town is the world in my mind is the world's largest junkyard it's i'm not even gonna name the place because people you know they good people that live there and we have love friends them. we love them but from the sky it looks like just a big wrecked car and there's old refrigerators and freezers i mean you drive by it every day you're just used to it <laughs> but I'm like, look, everybody's concerned. Why go spend ten thousand dollars for a fancy box when we got there's enough freezers and refrigerators that people have just dumped in our parish. In our parish that I can bury the state for ten years. <laughs> Oh, that's a pretty good idea. That's, that's environmentally friendly because you're getting rid of all the old and stuff that's sitting around. To finish up that, our town, man. Yeah, to finish that text up I read a while ago, listen, we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Now, how would you explain this unless you know you can be fully alive and an eternal being without your body? That's before Jesus comes back. He's coming back to raise the dead because watch. You say, what's the only thing that he can raise from 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 whether they were cremated or scattered in the four winds? You say, how could he raise them up and, and give them give them their body back and a better body? We believe that Jesus died and rose again, so we believe that God, this is 
1 Thessalonians 4, 13. We believe that God <laughs> will bring with Jesus in the time, here comes Jesus, those who have fallen asleep in him. Well, if he's bringing you back, he can't be bringing your body because it's out there been cremated or in the dust of the earth or in the ocean. You're like, so what's he bringing? What's he bringing? He will bring those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, what if you haven't died yet and you're, you're walking around on the earth? We who are left to the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. They get the first glimpse of the resurrection of the body. The Lord himself will come down from heaven, loud command, voice of the archangel, trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ. He's bringing them with him, their souls, their spirits, the invisible part of us. The dead in Christ will rise first. You say, well, what's the only thing that could rise? The body. The body. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up with them in the clouds and meet the Lord in the air, and so we'll be with the Lord forever. And the final little word there is, therefore, encourage each other with these words. They're very encouraging for him to come back, and we'll stand there and watch, and all these bodies, the ones that weren't not a body, they became a body up in their mother's womb, they lived on the earth, they died, their body disappeared, rotted or whatever. The remains of the Apostle Paul, all of them, you probably can't even find them. Right. But they're well. all just, <laughs> it's back, and it's a glorified body and that reunified. lives forever. Look, yeah. we're, in the, cool. we're yeah. in the book of John. In chapter 11, his friend died, Lazarus. Yep. He comes to the end of that session which is there's a lot of powerful moments in that book one is jesus wept which was the first verse i ever learned because yep. it was the shortest verse <laughs> jesus wept two words yep <clears throat> he wept even though he knew he was going to raise him up which just shows you that our god is concerned when we're concerned when we're upset he's upset even though he knows everything's going to be perfectly fine because then he said, take me to the tomb. But I want to read this. This is an obscure thought, but just to back up, you know, what we're talking about. He goes and he says, roll away the stone in verse 39. And Martha said, but Lord, and she was the sister of the dead man, Lazarus. By this time, there is a bad odor for he has been there four days. Look, the man is dead. Now, and, and my point and is... he is rotting. He's rotting. And no matter if he had been burned or... Uh, rotting is... You're now in a form. You're basically... This is where I think that every TV producer in the world got the idea about... Let's make a movie about zombie apocalypse. Somebody was reading John 11 because Jesus <laughs> said, Did I not tell you that if you believe you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone... Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank thee that you have heard me. I knew that you would always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing there. And when he said that, he called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out. So we know he's rotting. It's a, it's a zombie. <laughs> His hands and feet were wrapped in linen and a cloth around his face. How many times have you seen those movies? He's a mummy. Oh, uh, yeah, a mummy. <laughs> He's a zombie though, because he's because you see the rotting flesh, you know. And now they've made hundreds of movies. Oh yeah. And you ask them about Jesus come back from the dead. They're all we don't believe in that stuff. I'm like, sure you do. I know where you got the idea of this movie. <laughs> His name was Lazarus. He walked around scared. He people. ended up saying, "Take off the grave. Take off his grave clothes and let him go." He took off naked, <laughs> with rotting flesh, three times going. <laughs> and people say, I wonder where they got the idea about these And movies. the zombie apocalypse was born right there in John 11. Who knew? Now, That's a good out. point. I, my point is, no matter what condition he was, if you had that power, it doesn't matter. Forget all this, what you saw on movies or about these customs, traditions, or what the guys in the Greek theology said about how we are to handle bodies. It's coming out of the ground. So right. we'll close on that one, that in our opinion, in our biblical studied opinion, uh, cremation, no problem. 
uh, or any, any other way. You're, if, if you're in Christ, you'll be resurrected. Long as it's legal. No as problem. Legal, Unfortunately, right. as long as it's legal. That's because right. really, when you said the idea about, you know, take me out to sea. It's not far from all those guys in World War II that were killed. And, you know, they didn't have, you couldn't put them in refrigeration. Oh. So so they just slid them off out in the ocean. Wow. Yeah. I wouldn't mind it, it you was, using my body to bait a me catfish trout. Me either. You'd probably get a month out of me. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a great thought to end on. So, next time on Unashamed. We are so glad you're watching and listening to the Unashamed podcast. Be sure to like us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube and iTunes. That's going to keep you up to date with all the new episodes, and it's also going to let other people find out about our podcast. So, keep spreading the word and watching and listening to Unashamed with Phil Robertson.